Hi everyone, it's Emma here and I did vlog the AMSA Global Health Conference, it's the Australian Student Medical Association Global Health Conference, but because I couldn't vlog entirely the whole time, I'm going to be jumping back and forth like this so that you have a better idea of what's going on and I can kind of reflect on how the days went. But if you want to see what it's like going to the Global Health Conference or just my experience at a conference in general as a medical student, then keep watching. Good morning, it's me, Emma with the wet hair. Um, so it is a Saturday, and yet I was up at six again, just like normal, which is why the wet hair. Um, and that is because I am going to the AMSA Global Health Conference, and I'm pretty excited. But, um, yeah, I have to catch the bus at, like, just after 7, which, you know me, means I'm leaving the house super early. And to get there early to check in and register, and then we will start the conference. I'm also taking over on Oztrek's Instagram, so it'll be an interesting day of juggling this camera, my phone, and actually being present and learning. But I thought it'd be a really cool experience to document, and something that some of you may be curious about. Um, so, yeah, we'll chat more, maybe when I'm transferring between buses. So, I'm here at the University of New South Wales, UNSW, heading to the Roundhouse super early, but that's okay. So we are all checked in and I will chat a little bit about how this conference is organized. It's a bit different than anything I've ever been in before. Um, basically we are assigned waves or you choose a wave and that dictates all the breakout sessions you want to go to. But meaning me, I made a spreadsheet and none of the waves give me all of the sessions that I wanted to go to so we might try to be a bit of a rebel. But. I'll let you know how that goes. We are checked in, coffee has been grabbed, walking back to the conference now for the morning session. So, should be pretty good. I got a pin for being early, so rewarding my good habits. <laughs> um, yeah, I will see you in there. wrote back saying, oh, this is a bit gory, you know, crocodile and uh, buffalo hunting. Um, but, and the but... The first two sessions were really interesting, um, just people sharing their experience and things like that. I'm over in the corner trying not to look like a weirdo talking to the camera, but it is morning tea now where we get a chance to um, chat with some vendors and things and, you know, get free stuff, um, which is always good, and grab a snack. And then on to another session. So far, I've been able to sneak into the sessions that I want instead of going and following my wave. Um, don't tell anyone. And I was going around with, with my phone, and this is what you see. Is interesting talk hosted by <laughs> to bring the right to die to Australian citizens. And 
he has a fascinating story. I definitely suggest you go check him out. I will link some of his stuff below. Um, very opinionated and of course we all have our own biases so that would kind of sway whether or not you enjoyed his talk or agreed with his beliefs but I think it was really fascinating. As an international student I know more of that situation in Canada so it provided really good context for what it is here in Australia which is key for me to know um, but he was also just a great speaker. But uh, when I heard about the fact that there was to be a law, I, mean, I don't think anyone even mentioned the E word during my whole Sydney University Medical School. That was in the 80s. Uh, but when I got to uh, Darwin there, I hadn't been practicing. And I highly recommend if you get a chance to hear him talk, but he's now relocated to Europe. So <laughs> that might not be an option. All of our thought-provoking plenaries and breakouts um, and that have splashed your way. Sorry, I'm trying to read my notes and insert the nautical themes. <laughs> A few things just before we um, all... So the first day I sat and I listened a lot and that is what I chose to do. I think if I had followed my wave there would have been more time with um, smaller groups and potentially more interacting with other students but I wanted just to hear what these people had to tell me. So my focus is going to this conference were gaining insight on women's health around the globe and in the specific areas that the people who came and gave speeches were operating in or had lived in or had experienced in. I really wanted to know more about Medicine Sans Frontier uh, or Doctors Without Borders because that is one thing that before I even said I wanted to be a doctor, I knew I wanted to be involved in outreach like that. Um, so I went to as many of the talks from MSF people as I could and I really wanted to focus on outreach or how outreach can be done sustainably and how you can as a medical professional or a healthcare professional go into a country or a place and set up sustainable healthcare interventions that aren't just oh I'm going to go in I'll do a couple of pro bono surgeries and I'll leave and so I went to specific talks that I thought could give me that knowledge. <music> We're here for day two, had to get coffee again, obviously. And I was silly and forgot my memory card. So day two will be entirely on my phone. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I have company today. <laughs> but we got here early enough to get our coffee bean pins because med students apparently just love to collect pins. I'm one of them, but yeah. Sorry about the footage today. <laughs> And then there was day two where I continued to make my own schedule um, and I ignored my wave. I can check a lot of them. I listened to Mark Isaacs talk about the refugee um, situation here in Australia and how that has unfolded over the last few years and boy was that eye-opening. I had a bit of background knowledge but I really didn't know the ins and the outs and I think he provided some really great personal context through his work and his experience and what refugees and asylum seekers are currently or have experienced trying to get into Australia because they're not even technically in Australia. Um, I ended up purchasing two of his books, they're back here actually, and I'm really excited to read those. I think as an international student that was really good for me to understand the environment that I'm living in and that I could potentially be working in um, and what that means politically and just understanding the background more there. I just realized that this drawer is open. That's gonna bug me. <laughs> Sorry, editing Emma. Um, one of the breakouts on the second day was also Dr. Ray Hodgins, who is building a mother and child or like woman and baby hospital in Nepal. I have also <laughs> his book back there and the proceeds went towards that cause. I will link, um, the Australians for Women's Health Foundation below um, because I think it's a really good cause and they do have opportunities for med students to go over on breaks and things and support them however our skills provide so that's something you might be interested in and it was really eye-opening to see sort of his first-hand experience of the vast healthcare differences and outcomes that there can be around the globe. I mean, obviously I was aware of that. I have a public health background. I have volunteered in Namibia. I know that those exist, but some of the pictures and some of the stories he was able to tell was kind of a reminder of that. I think as someone who lives and thrives in sort of the Western 
world and a very privileged life, you can kind of forget, even if you're studying, you can forget that privilege and you can forget how different health is just around the world. And it was a really good reminder of sort of why I am interested in global health specifically. My day two ended with a really interesting and really important panel hosted by Pigeon, who's here on YouTube. I think the link will appear here. It was about intersex individuals and the abuses, lack of autonomy, and just cruelty that they face at the hands of the medical profession. And it was really interesting to see Pigeon's perspective, as well as the other panelists, on what they've endured at the hands of healthcare professionals and their parents or just healthcare professionals in general and how they feel being ostracized by something that's supposed to help people. So it was a really interesting way to end the day and I think it was a really important thing for a lot of us to hear to understand the discrimination that they face as budding medical professionals. So my overall reflections, I really only went to the GHC sort of academic programming. They had socials hosted in the evening that seemed amazing, afterwards the pictures seemed like a lot of fun, and everybody afterwards was saying how much fun they had. It was just something that I didn't want to go to, slash since the GHC this year was in Sydney and I still had school going on, it didn't feel like I could take the whole weekend off. So I would return from the conference and in the evening do schoolwork or notes. Um, I highly recommend the Global Health Conference to any student who has any interest or doesn't even know if they have an interest in global health. I think you will learn so much. If you're an international student, you'll learn a lot about what Australians think, what Australians are doing in the terms of global health and local Australian politics as well. Um, and if you're an Australian student, it's great to know those things as well. Follow your wave, you don't need to do what I did. I feel like I have to say that I was kind of a bad example, but I really enjoyed my experience. But I think if you follow your wave, you will have a very well-rounded experience. So I definitely learned a lot. I wish I could delve into it a little bit more, but if I did, this video would be even longer than it already is. If there's any speakers or topics that you saw me list during the video and you want to have a conversation about it more then make sure you comment below um, and we can have a chat about it or if a lot of people want to hear more about it I can make another video but I really highly recommend GHC next year I believe is on the Gold Coast so follow their socials so you can find out where if you're an Australian medical student and if you're a medical student somewhere else like in Canada or the United States Look up what conferences are available to you. A lot of schools will have grants that you can apply to to attend conferences as long as they're furthering your learning. And yeah, I just genuinely love conferences. I'll probably continue to vlog them as I go to more. I love learning and networking. Comment below what videos you want to see in the future. I think I have a day in my life coming up um, or maybe a planner video. We'll see. Really loving the community that we're starting to build here. So I'll see you in the next one.